Guys, Tim Morris for Tiger Response, and I just want to talk briefly about a subject uh, that I'm seeing a lot, uh, a, a thing that I'm seeing a lot on the range. Uh, we do shotgun classes. As a matter of fact, this coming weekend I have one we're doing. And uh, what I see guys bringing shotguns to shotgun class to, to use their defense shotguns, maybe their home defense shotgun, maybe it's something they carry in their car. And what I'm seeing that is driving me crazy is they put everything known to man on this shotgun. They got lasers, they got uh, butt cuffs, they've got uh, all kind of different things on this gun that they really don't need. It makes a gun heavy, unwielding, and they really don't need it. So here's my thoughts, and you guys can comment if you think there's something different. My thoughts on what needs to be on your long gun, whether it be a shotgun or a rifle, but I'm particularly talking about a shotgun here. Number one, you need a sling. The reason you need a sling is I may need to take my hands off this shotgun to climb a ladder, open a door, grab a kid, do any number of things that I need this shotgun to stay with me, uh, and I'm not going to set it down, so I need a sling for it to hang on. And it could be something as simple as if I've got to clear my house to go get a loved one, and I don't, I don't recommend that, but if you have to do it, you're going to do it. If you got a loved one in another room and you hear breaking glass and you think somebody's entering, you're going to go get that child or that person. Uh, it might be clearing that hallway. I'm not going to do it with that shotgun, that long gun poking around the corner. I'm going to let that shotgun lay and get my pistol out and shoot or hold it at retention and clear that corner, and then I'll get the shotgun back up. So I need a sling. Number two, I need a light because naturally, again, this, you know, at home, they're going to do this, this home invasion at three o'clock in the morning or something like that. They're probably seldom ever going to do it in the daylight. So I need a light to be able to see what I'm shooting at. Uh, now, by the way, you need a handheld light as well. I can't point this shotgun and look for targets because I'll be pointing at my own loved ones. So I, but if I, I need a shooting light, if I decide to shoot this shotgun in the, in the night. So that's the second thing. And then the last thing I'm going to put on this shotgun is a tourniquet. And a lot of you guys will go, a tourniquet? Oh, my God, you could have a side saddle. You could have this or that and the other. Well, just realize uh, uh, if you get shot in a critical situation, nobody's coming to help you. And a tourniquet's one of the best things to have on you and know how to use. Uh, if I get shot in any extremities, I get my uh, femoral artery uh, cut from a shot or I get my brachial artery cut from a shot, I've got to put that tourniquet on with about a minute and a half. Uh, after that, I'm probably going to be going into the, to the passing out phase, and within three minutes from one of those major bleeds, uh, you're going to bleed out. Uh, so those three things. Now, uh, side saddles are nice, don't get me wrong, and I don't have a problem with them having on there, but I see guys put ammo everywhere on a shotgun. They got that, uh, they call it the stage saver or whatever. They got a round up by the chamber and a holder. And then they got a butt cuff on the shotgun. I don't agree with butt cuffs because unless you can keep them in place. And I might have to shoot off side, so I don't want a bunch of ammo sticking me in the face when I'm trying to shoot off side and I can't make a cheek well. Uh, and a lot of times they're not good ones and they'll just roll around and they'll be, in a, uh, they'll be on the wrong side of the gun when you need them. And in reality, if you think about this, I use my particular shotguns for home defense. What I have in them is probably enough. Uh, I, I don't think a bad guy is going to stay in your house when you're shooting at him with a shotgun uh, or any gun for that matter. He's going to be booking it and trying to get out of there because he knows he screwed up. He picked the wrong house. He's got somebody that's going to defend themselves in their home and their family. So uh, I would say any anybody that has a gun that holds five plus one, six rounds would be plenty enough on a shotgun. Uh, I don't want to make the shotgun heavy and unwelding. And for what I'm using it for, uh, I don't need that extra ammo. Uh, yes, I have extra ammo available in, in, in a, uh, um, I've got a uh, bandolier that I have next to the shotgun. Maybe I'll pick it up when I pick the shotgun up, maybe not. But I believe that what I have in the shotgun is plenty enough to take care of the situation. So those three things on the shotgun and uh, a sling, a light, and a tourniquet. And the tourniquet, be uh, I usually mount my tourniquets on the sling because it's an easy way to do it. But you can also, I've seen some people put them on the butt of the, or on the stock of the shotgun at the rear with just a, what I call a, a ranger bands. So they'll just put a ranger band around a tourniquet right there, and it holds it, and it's good enough. Uh, but those three things, uh, I've seen everybody, like I said, come to shotgun class bringing everything known to man. Everything they see on the front of that magazine that's tacked onto a shotgun, they'll put it on. And it becomes unwelding, uh, uh, 
hard to use because things are in the way. And another thing, depending on the shotgun, the M2 Benelli's is especially inertia-driven shotguns. Let's just say inertia-driven shotguns. You may, you have to be careful with how much weight you put on that shotgun because it can uh, make the inertia uh, lethargic and not work properly. Uh, and I think, if I remember correctly, uh, a somebody I, I don't know if it was Benelli or another instructor told me this, and I and I. I tried it, and it tr- proved to be true. Uh, Benelli M2, or inertia-driven shotgun, they say no, put no more than a pound on it. So that means a light and not a, turn, uh, not a uh, uh, side saddle. Uh, you got to be careful how much weight you put on it because it will retard the gun from working properly if you put too much weight on it. So in closing, you got to set your shotguns up for success. Set them up for simplicity. Don't make it... Don't make it uh, uh, you know, the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. Don't put a lot of crap on your shotgun that you don't need. Uh, decide what you're going to do with that shotgun. If you're using it outside, if you got it for a truck gun because you're in a state that you don't want to carry a long gun, okay, so be it. Uh, you might have to have some different ammo on that gun or something like that. That's all fine and well. But for home defense, uh, I need that light to see where I'm where I'm uh, going to shoot at. I need that sling in case I need to let it... L- let it hang while I'm doing something, and I need that tourniquet in case a bad guy gets a lucky one off and injures me. So in closing, uh, set those guns up the way you want to use them. Uh, remember, your responsibility be ready for the fight never ends.